I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. You're a spaceman, huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Uh, welcome to Wrestle Rock Podcast. I'm your host, Nostra Daben, and I will host this episode with my uh, partner, Johnny D. How are you doing today? Yes, I'm going great. It's always a pleasure for, yeah, me too. for doing this uh, project with you. We are at our fourth uh, season of the Wrestle Rock Podcast, folks, and we have a special guest uh, tonight. Uh, he is the founder of ECW, one of the ter- of the three uh, most important uh, wrestling company in the world. So in the nineties, yes, in the nineties. So let me introduce yourself, Mister Todd Gordon. How are you doing tonight, my friend? Uh, Good evening, gentlemen. How are you guys doing tonight? Yes, yeah. we going super great. Uh, thank you so much for your time. This is very appreciated that you uh, can take a moment uh, with us. And currently, you release a book called uh, Todd is God. And uh, it's all about uh, your wrestling career, of course. But uh, you learn a lot of uh, stories behind the ECW, and uh, that will be um, very interesting. So, folks, if you want uh, the book, it is uh, um, available on Amazon.com. Just top Todd is God. Uh, this is the name of the book of Mr. Todd Gordon. So, uh, we're going forward with some questions. So, go ahead, my friend. Yeah. What can we discover inside the, your book? Well, first of all, let me congratulate you for making it to season four. That's Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, yeah, that's not easy to ask. Great job. Thank uh, you so thank much. Thank you. Rock is the place to be. Listen to it. Uh, I can tell you that behind, the book basically takes you behind the curtain. It takes you from the day that we came up with the idea of an Eastern Championship Wrestling, which was ECW, which again begat Extreme Championship Wrestling. Yeah. Book is after a chant. The fans used to scream at the arena when I come out to the ring. There were the fans were as much a part of the promotion as we were. We were very much symbiotic with the fans. Uh, they had their chance for everyone who came out, and this was mine, and that's where we got the title of the book from. But I'll take you backstage. I'll take you on the road. I'll take you to the room where all the decisions were made. Everything you always want to know behind the scenes of how they got to those angles and how they got to those storylines. It's all spelled out. All right. So, and um, why did you decide to write the book? We probably know the answer because you have a <laughs> lot of background in the the, the, the wrestling industry. But uh, who is behind the idea to launch uh, your book, my friend? That would be my co- my co writer Sean. Uh, yeah. He is uh, brilliant at what he does. Uh, he approached me for two years after we had done some DVDs together and said, we've got to get your story out there. Okay. Nobody knows the real story. All you see is WWE, the unauthorized version of ECW. Mm-hmm. WWE books, WWE uh, movies, not movies, uh, videos, the unauthorized of the rise and fall of these. Yeah. You know, they've never once spoken to me in all these years. So yeah. unauthorized version. I'm the only person who can give you the authorized version. Mm-hmm. I was there. I did it. I saw it. I wrote it. I, I saw it. It came out of here. So now I decided to find let people have the authorized version of what really happened. Instead of the story that the WWE writers and the, their employees wanted you to have. Yeah. Yeah. And if my memory is good, your partner, Sean, uh, created a Beyond of the Mat. Um, Beyond the Mat. Uh, Beyond the Mat. Uh, in the uh, documentary uh, in the mean 90s, right? No, Sean had a 
company called Casey Commentaries. Okay, okay. Uh, it's my bad story. Barry Blatstein. Okay, nice. Okay, uh, where can we purchase your official book, uh, Tan is, Tad is God? Well, here, I'm not sure how it works over there, but here you can get any bookstore you walk into. Uh, obviously, Amazon or any booksellers online. Uh, we've been really happy to release it here in the States in July. In July. And it's been came out number one on Amazon, the wrestling category, came out number one in the audible category. So we're really excited about the success of it. And people have been really reacting positively to it because they're really getting stories they had no idea about. Okay. Not to mention all the drugs, sex, and rock and roll and good stuff, too. It's all there. Yeah, cool. And um, we know uh, before your wrestling career, Uh, you were the president of a jewelry uh, company called uh, Jewelry Carver uh, W. Reed Corporation. Yes, sir. Are you still the president of this company or are you retired? I, I still am. We're 163 years in business. 163. My wow. Daughter, my daughter is now our fourth generation of my family in, in the business with us. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So really, everything's going really well with that, too. So I had no real need to write a book. But there were a lot of facts that were put out there, especially with me when I left ECW. They were never true. And I never addressed them. I just let them lay. And it's like, well, let it be. It's 20 years, 25 years, enough. But then it's got to a point where I felt a need to really tell the truth, tell the fans the story, let them know what's going on. And that's what I tried to do. Nice. Okay, uh, Mr. Gordon, uh, have you always been a wrestling fan? Since about the time I could walk and talk, yeah. yeah. I grew up in the age, of the age five on watching the WWF. Okay, really okay. When the, when the Vince, Mac, uh, Vince, uh, Vince McMahon Sr. was the owner yeah. on there. Absolutely. I grew up with the Bruno San Martino era. And that yeah, was the great. That is for Gordon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> of course. All believe Saw back then when I was a kid was believable. I'd watch it. I go, oh my! God. I believed that Bruno and, and George Animal Steel were. I mean, I believed everything I was watching. And as I got older, and of course WWE and WCW started putting on cartoon products to the point where they actually had a cartoon show. Yeah. I mean, it, it took all the love I had for this industry and just was killing it. So I wanted to put on shows that I wanted to see where people could believe again. Then you watch any ECW product, you'll see it's real. I mean, maybe the outcomes aren't, but these guys are out there beating the living daylights out of each other. This was hardcore stuff. No way to watch this and not believe again. And that's yeah. what people be able to do. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, the company is very distinguished uh, compared to the, a different wrestling promotion. And I think that's uh, that doing uh, the difference So uh, that's that that's really cool. So uh, we were the Howard Stern of wrestling, is what I like to say. We brought R-rated wrestling back or out for the first time. We wanted to be what Howard Stern was to the radio industry. We wanted to be an alternative product to what everybody was used to in wrestling. And that yeah. included rock, the, the music, you know, the grunge music, the music of the '90s. Uh, yeah, Paul was brilliant at picking out what music, you know, which guy he was a master at that. Yes. Uh, We wanted to give believable storylines. We didn't want to give them characters. We don't have a race car driver and a plumber and a dentist. We <laughs> gave them these people were real. Yeah. We treated them like they were real. And that way we respect the audience's intelligence. Yeah. And that was the good period for the innovation because uh, at the mid 90s, as you said, there's a lot of uh, stuff and, uh, and our core was growing up. And that's the perfect fit for the ECW because, uh, you know. So uh, tell us about the foundation of uh, the ECW. I remember that uh, a couple of years ago, um, I have in my head a good segment with the FBI and yourself <laughs> and uh, uh, about the, um, the ECW belt and the, 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 con the, the switch of the ECW and the, 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 the old version of the ECW to the extreme ECW. So that was just amazing. And I remember that Sean, uh, Shane Douglas was involved in that. And that was so cool. So 
go in, my friend. <laughs> well, as, as Eastern Championship Wrestling, how we began, it had a much more uh, local feel to it, like East Coast of the United States kind of thing. And we yeah. really wanted to expand and go to more national you know, reach because we were selling so many tapes to people who were tape traders at the time. Like, we do an arena show and get orders from Japan. Let's say, how yeah. do people in Japan know about us? People in New Jersey don't even know about us. How do people in Japan know about us? But people were trading tapes and they were trying to tell us, we love this product. We want to get more of it. How do we do it? How do we do it? So we tried to expand and we used uh, Venture to go from Eastern to Extreme to make that our new national world heavyweight championship. And Shane Douglas was the one who was first to wear the belt. Of course. Of course. And folks, if you know that, uh, if you didn't that, um, uh, Mr. Todd Gordon is not just the ECW owner, but he also created the ECW chant. Uh, that's awesome for <laughs> real because I, I did not create the chant, the fans did. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. I mean, God bless them all. I mean, and other companies like WCW, they hated that chant. Vince McMahon hated that chant, uh, but they were doing it at their shows. Yeah, of course. I uh, I remember that, man. <laughs> and WCW went as far as to have a mascot called Wildcat Willie, WCW, <laughs> who would run around the audience to try to get them to say WCW, and it didn't work. <laughs> Burned Vince every time he'd do a show, and people would scream ECW at his shows to the point where, he, in the long run, the very end, he ended up buying out the bankruptcy and making his own ECW to get people to hate it and stop calling out those letters in the shows. He made himself the champ. He did everything he could to get our fans to turn against those letters, and it didn't work. And it's 30 years later, and they're still chanting it. It's yeah. amazing. Okay. Uh, how were you able to recruit uh, uh, former WWE talents uh, such as Jimmy Snuka, Tito Santana, Don Morocco, Salvatore Balomo, uh, and more? <laughs> well, they were just coming off of TV at that time. And I was just starting out. So I was using mostly local hands at the time. Okay. And to get people to the show, I tried to bring in one star per show. It was Ivan Koloff first. <clears throat> the Russian bear, Ivan Koloff. Then it was Superfly Snuka. Yeah. Then it was Magnificent Morocco. <laughs> then eventually Ed, Eddie Gilbert came in. I made him, I gave him the, the book. He was writing the shows and booking the shows. We started bringing in more and more talent. And all of a sudden, it became the place to be. If we were not signed by one of the other groups, they were lining up to get an ECW. And the list of people who came through our doors is unbelievable. I mean, everybody in wrestling seems like came through those doors. And Mick Foley and Stone Cold Steve Austin went to us to WWE. So. Yeah. And um, we would like to talk about uh, the transition between the ECW original to the ECW uh, Extreme. So um, – Around what year did you uh, meet uh, your first? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, what year did you first meet uh, Paul Eamon for the first time? Uh, now, I started the company in 1992. 1992, okay. When we got TV, it was 1993. And uh, Eddie Gilbert, as I said, was my booker. And he brought Paul down to the shows. They were friendly. And okay. Paul, you know, being on camera character, he was the manager of, you know, Eddie Gilbert and uh, Morocco, and so he, he would take the whole heel fashion as his group, and he would be the spokesperson, basically. Yeah. So I met him, and he was just a piece of talent. And then as time went on, we became, got to know each other better and better. We became closer and closer, where we were best friends, and we just had a similar sense of what we wanted to see in a product. We had the same sense of humor, which is why I mentioned the FBI. Every show we did was not just hardcore. That was a lot, plenty of it. But we also had comedy. We also had rap. Eddie Guerrero and Dean Malenko. We gave the fans some of everything. Yeah. But From all of it was real. Were. But not no junk stuff, but the humor, I mean, the BWO, I mean, there, there's plenty, and Public Enemy. We gave plenty of humor and plenty of violence, too. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Gordon, uh, what was your reaction, your first reaction when WWE acquired ECW? Well, they bought the bankruptcy. I didn't think they were doing more with it than just you know, use the tape library. I had no idea that Vince, in his mind, would try to recreate or try to start it up again. But I firmly believe he did that with the idea of imploding it and blowing it up. Was, he nah. just hated it. And everyone told me there, mm -hmm. every time, 
They say ECW to show it makes him nuts. He's spending billions of dollars and they're yelling out ECW for his little company, the little engine that could. And how that's possible? It's 20 years later and he's, they're still yelling it. And he was determined to make that stop and it didn't work. Yeah. And uh, uh, unfortunately, he, uh, he closed the business, but I, I never understand why he don't take the ECW uh instead of nxt because that was for for my in my mind i think that the ecw spirit was synonymous of innovation and that's what the ecw was so but it is what it is my friend so let me explain this I, we caught lightning in a bottle we were mm -hmm. right time right place Lightning in a bottle. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the internet didn't come along for another five or six years. Yeah. Had there, had there been an internet when mm -hmm. we were starting this up? Oh, my God. It was very different than... We could have shown our shows to the whole country. Yeah. Our, our radio shows. Instead of waiting to get a videotape, VHS tape in the mail, you know, a week and a half, ten days later. So we really missed that part of it by, you know, just, just that close. And that could have really blown us up huge. Uh, I don't think you could restart it again because you can't recreate something. It's called lightning in a bottle. It's called lightning in a bottle because it only happens once. And it, the lightning bolt hit it. I don't think it can be recreated. People have tried for years to start a new ECW, but you can't do it. That's so, so that's so sad because he he still has the um, the trademark for the ECW. So why don't he push? Not that maybe uh, one or two times a year, just like a kind of one night stand, just yeah. for uh, for the pleasure of pure wrestling fans. So that's very sad, sorry, uh, honestly. And mm -hmm. we would like to know your opinions uh, about the failure of ECW in the mid two thousands because the transaction was very 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 different and that was a big clash compared to the the ECW extreme original and the ECW uh created by Vince McMahon you know well you have to understand here here were Paul and I you know just two guys you know putting on a show it wasn't like we had billions of dollars to put out there in pyro yeah. and you know buy our own way on the TV we you know we had to like Literally, with a little engine that could, huffing and puffing. And everybody worked there the same way. They were all the guys trying to make it. They wanted to get there. They wanted to get there. Whether it's the Sandman or Az or the Dudleys or Dream or whoever it was, these guys all wanted so badly. And mm -hmm. Paul and I wanted so badly. You couldn't find that energy, that synergy, you know, by just trying to create something new. It happened organically. I repeat once again, uh, folks, Uh, go to the Amazon.com and buy this amazing book for only 40 US dollars. It's an investment and you will learn a lot of interesting stories made by Todd Gordon and Sean Oliver himself, themselves, sorry. And um, forward by the late uh, Terry Funk. Yes, exactly. Oh, uh, I'd be, uh, be nowhere without Terry Funk. God yeah. bless Terry Funk. I was yeah. so humbled and honored that he would write the word to my book. Yeah. Really yeah. So much to me. Yeah. And what is your reaction when you learned that Terry Fong passed away uh, a couple of two weeks months, ago, two months ago? Two months ago. I was devastated. Yeah. Was devastated. yeah. Me too. Sure. Well, what, what the business lost is not just a wrestler. They lost yeah. a big part of what wrestling was. Yeah, exactly. That was very, a very sad, a very sad situation. We know that he has not necessarily in a good ill condition, but he has a big part of the wrestling for every decades. So uh, that's a very uh, loss for since wrestling. 1965. He wrestled since 1965. All right, that was amazing. Without Terry Funk, you would never heard of ECW. Yeah. Without Terry Funk, oh, yeah. you would never heard right. of Boo. Uh, public enemy. I mean, he made all those guys by exactly. making them equals to him in the ring and mm -hmm. being so generous and giving to them. He made that. He made ECW. And I said always, I will always be 
grateful for having Terry Funk in my life. It's already 20 minutes, oh, yeah. and for ending, <laughs> as usual, my partner Benoit, aka uh, Nostradamus Ben, it's all about the French prophet. He tried to predict the future of our guests. So go ahead, my friend. He was my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, first of all, thank you so much for the interview, uh, Mr. Garden. Uh, it was huge. It was uh, very good. <laughs> it's my pleasure, guys. I love your show. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I have two predictions for you. Uh, first, uh, I predict to you many success with your uh, your good book. Your book. Uh, that, that is God. Yeah, that is God. Yeah. yeah. Also, I predict uh, to you maybe an appearance in the future, uh, Dark Side of the Ring, about ECW. Well, there is one they already did about Sandman. Yeah. Oh, okay, about Sandman in the no, next I, season. I was there for a few hours taping for that. Okay. okay. So, yeah, that was the air next season. Not oh, okay, next season, season five. Oh, okay, the rest I didn't know that. Oh, we have a scoop. <laughs> awesome. So, thank you so much for the interview. That was. Uh, we are very, very, very grateful. We know that you are very busy with a lot of things, and we are very, uh, very grateful that you can take 20 minutes with us. And I appreciate you guys and all the Canadian fans of ECW. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. And uh, have a good evening, my friend. Goodbye. Take care. <laughs>